Hi, I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and today we have a very special guest, Stefan Lau, came all the way from Copenhagen to talk with us about the venting of the Ilia Bullet. Hello, Stefan. Sure. Hello, Ingo. <laughs> Good to be here. Yeah, great to have you here. Yeah. Um, so, venting of the Ilia Bullet is something that it's um, asked quite often by people. How do I set up a venting system? And you also have it in the manual. But today I want to re show it show it in life so that people can see how a setup uh, is being done. Yes. But first of all, we can talk about when is actually venting needed? In which cases do I need a venting system? Why do I need a venting system? Maybe you can elaborate a bit on, on yes. that. Yes, I will. So, well, it all depends on where you are with your roastery. Mm. You might be roasting out in the free. Mm -hmm. Of course, there you probably need no vending at all. Yeah. If you go inside, uh, you will need vending no matter what, because this size roaster will produce smoke, mm -hmm. no matter how small the batches are. Yeah. I mean, the certain amount of beans will uh, produce a certain amount of, of uh, smoke, no matter what roaster you are using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So in order to have proper venting, you will first of all have to decide, so am I close to any outlet through the walls or through the roof uh, that I can use with my roasting? Am I walking around with my roastery or is it fixed in a, in yeah. a permanent spot all the time? Yeah. So if, it's, if you move it around, if, if you are indoor, you can easily do it with, with your normal stow uh, range hood, yeah. that's fine. Um, but soon you will learn that you will like to have your own venting, yeah. uh, dedicated venting system. Mm -hmm. So with venting, it's important to know that there's basically two uh, situations with the bullet. You want uh, passive venting if you can just go straight up or maybe at a, at a slight angle and mm. then outside immediately after uh, two and a half meter or so. Mm. Because then the heat from the smoke will uh, simply uh, go upwards mm -hmm. and uh, out the vent. Uh, how, out long, the, the... how long can be the distance here for a so we're a we're method. talking we're talking two and a half maybe three meters. Mm -hmm. If you go straight up, yep. you probably could go higher, yep. but we would not recommend several meters or at least not if you have to go uh, horizontal with your tube. Mm -hmm. So that's passive where yep. you let the bullet do all the work yep. and the, uh, the, uh, um, the, the exhaust impeller yep. uh, sitting in the back. Will will do all the work. It will bend the yeah. bullet, but also push out the smoke. Okay, so it's strong enough for that. Yeah. Mm. And then we have the other situation yeah. where where you are probably sitting uh, far away from from the outlet. Maybe you have a, a, a strange route of the airflow going out in the corner yeah. of your room, and you're sitting another place. There, you would need active bending. Yeah. I mean, suction from from the other end. Yeah. So a vent or something like an impeller or a vent that it's actively taking out the right. air and smoke. Right. Yeah. And, and in that case, uh, you should not have the hose from the venting system going fixed from yeah. the bullet. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen then is that you will suck out all the, the nice hot air mm -hmm. that you need in the roasting chamber. Yeah. Not only taking the smoke, but also <laughs> vent the whole bullet. Yeah. Mm. And we don't want to see that, of course. Yeah. Okay. So you mean for, for some people, it's still working fine to put it under a kitchen vent? Does it have to be, uh, does it need some special specification, like a strength of the airflow, the kitchen vent? Or would you say it's, it could work on a regular kitchen vent? Well, I would say if you have relatively small batches, like 300 to up to five, maybe 600 gram, then even a range hood at the top of that at 600 gram would actually be limiting uh, the, the amount of smoke yeah. that it can actually take. Yeah. 
It also depends on what range hood system you have yeah. in your kitchen. Mm. Some are stronger, some are uh, re recirculating yeah. the air, mm. which is not that good because yeah. it's actually a pretty strong smoke mm. coming up. So you'll have to decide that by yourself. Mm. You will have to try it out simply. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, that that would that would limit the the, the use in a kitchen. Yeah. I would say. Okay. Before you were also talking about um, roasting indoor or outdoors. Yeah. When somebody is roasting outdoor, what do I have to consider? Well, roasting outdoor is, I mean, roasting uh, need constant parameters, so to speak. The environmental temperature, even the humidity, mm -hmm. uh, windy circumstances yeah. around the roaster will all impact your roast. Yeah. So if you want consistency, yeah. most people want consistency yeah. from batch to batch, you need to keep those parameters constant. Yeah. So it's not as such recommended to mm. roast mm. out, but but I mean, in many places around the world, you have pretty constant temperature. Yeah. Uh, so you can actually do that mm. and compensate. Yeah. Okay. So, but the nice thing is, of course, uh, you don't need to 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 do any special vending then. Yeah. Because you are outside. Outside. And probably it doesn't matter whether yeah. you have smoke mm. coming up. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you say if I'm indoor, I can. Either I can try it with the with the kitchen vent, mm -hmm. and if I realize I need more venting, then in best case I have a spot where I regularly put my bullet. It can be fixed there, or I just have a spot that I can go to when when I need it, and there set up a venting system. And you said it's like if I have about until two point five meters, something like that, to an yeah. exhaust or place where the smoke can get out, yeah. I can do this passively. So just I just need. Yeah. a tube to bring out the smoke yeah and when it's a bit longer you should think about an active venting system yes and further to that if you have any bendings yeah. on the on the hose mm. i would say I, I i i would never recommend any bending yeah. if it's passive yes you can have a slight you know, a big rounding on the yeah. bend, mm -hmm. and then as long as it's not longer than two, three meters, it's okay. Yeah. But but uh, horizontal, yeah. Uh, no way with passive uh, okay. winding. Interesting. Yeah. So we're going to have a um, look at these hose and tubes. Um, just one last thing about the active winding. Yeah. What do I have to look at when when I'm looking for a an impeller or a ventilator to put put on that? I think there are quite some experiences within the community. Yes. yes. Unfortunately, you can't have the same good vent all over the world. Yeah. Even in Europe, from country to country, mm. you have different motors and and mm. venting system. But but there's certain things you have to look for. First of all, the temperature. Yeah. If you're not very far away from the bullet, you will have pretty high temperatures yeah. going even through uh, the ventilator. Yeah. So those blades um, uh, will actually have to take that temperature. Yeah. And right out of the bullet, mm. you will have like 180, maybe even more yeah. Celsius uh, in temperature. Yeah. Um, so it better be metal. Yeah. Uh, but even some plastic uh, venting system can actually take pretty high temperatures. Yeah. But you will have to find that out with the particular venting yeah. you're, you're looking for. Yeah. In terms of uh, velocity, yeah. well, I would say a normal velocity like those you have in the bathroom, mm -hmm. maybe a little more, yeah. uh, would, would suffice. Yeah. Uh, for, for, for most applications. And even if you go for, for those that can actually take the heating, yeah. they tend to be bigger ones. Yeah, okay. Uh, but these are usually found in, in uh, do-it-yourself stores. Or... Sure, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And then is it um, only, are we only talking about the exhaust on top of the machine or yes. also about the cooling tray? Yes. You are touching upon uh, the uh, second most important 
thing, which is, of course, the cooling box. Yeah. It will actually give a lot of smoke in the beginning, yeah. at least, because it comes straight out yeah. of the roaster where it had the highest temperature. Mm. So you have a lot of smoke there, briefly, yeah. and it will be spread out in the room yeah. from, the, uh, from the cooling box. Yeah. And, and so what you can do there is also to have a passive tube connected, and mm. we do uh, provide some, some adapters for yeah. doing that. Uh, but the thing is that the cooling tray is actually very high velocity because we want to cool down those beans immediately. Yeah. Mm. So it could not be connected to the same system you have yeah. with the bullet easily, at least. Okay. So I recommend that you have a separate mm -hmm. outlet for the cooling tray somehow mm. that you can shut off and on as you need. Okay. And then the other vending more permanently mm -hmm. uh, going to the bullet. Okay, okay. So do you have, so to have two tubes, to have two systems, don't connect them with a Y connector or something like that. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. Well, you, you you can use a Y connector, but then you you need to have the uh, the vending, mm -hmm. the external vending motor running pretty high revolutions yep. in order to cope with the airflow you need yep. from the cooling tray. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And um, then when we have such a venting system. Do we kind of maintain it? Are there things we have to look after? Because when we are talking about commercial roasting with commercial roasters, then cleaning the venting system is quite um, quite an important topic. Yes, yes. And and I would say it's it's not less important in private use. Yeah. Maybe even more there because yeah. you're not following maybe the regulations yeah. that, that companies would have to follow. Mm -hmm. But actually, in in terms of uh, to be secure around it, you would have to to uh, to maintain your vending system. Simply yeah. take it apart and see those yeah. hoses. Do you have a, a a thick layer of maybe five millimeters of yeah. of, of debris there? Yeah. Uh, that you have to clean out. The the good thing is with the with the passive system, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Okay. And and you can just use a vacuum cleaner to to to. But but bigger systems can yeah. be different uh, yeah. or more difficult to open. And what what is also important there is that if you go out with your system in all weather conditions, yeah. you can have condensation mm -hmm. on the inside if it's not uh, insulated. Yeah. And then you would have oils coming down there, and then they might be fra flammable. Yeah. So so the. the you, you need to think about your system yeah. and maintain it. Yeah, okay. Keep it clean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, so I would say let's now have a look at what parts do I need and how I would do a setup. Sure. So I think the recommended solution from the ILEO team is using those uh, parts that you are providing as, as a file, these 3D sure. printed files. And maybe you can. And talk about those those parts, show them, and then also show them how, how it's going to be used. Sure, I'll do that. So we got three parts on our website. Yeah. Part A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. So A and B actually always goes together. Yeah. Um, and the thing about part A and B is that they they fit together in a manner so that the the smallest part here actually goes into the bullet yep. and make a nice snug fit without smoke uh, going out yep. anywhere. Yep. And this little small diameter goes into this bigger part here that actually connects to the hose system. Yep. And you can actually put them on top of each other yep. and you can have it more or less standing alone like this. Now you got it. Yeah. Um, if you need to move around the bullet, you can just take off the big part yeah. and leave the small part on. Yeah. And then I have the passive cooling venting system. Yes. And of course, if it's longer and you have uh, this, this one is fixed to yeah. whatever uh, a window or yeah. a hole in the roof, then this one will, will stay. And, and that's why we made it. Uh, so that they can be disconnected. Disconnect, yeah. Another thing around it is that this one is actually put 
sufficiently close to the smoke in a passive setting yeah. where the smoke will always go up the tube yeah. and not out. I would like to talk about the parts if this is fine for you. So mm -hmm. there are two um, 3D printed parts. Yes. And you can get files on the ILO website and then uh, go to a 3D printer. Sure. What do you have, you have to look for when you're going to print those yeah. parts? What instructions do you have to give your printer? Yeah. It's, it's important. There's two things that are important and they are interconnected, those mm -hmm. two things. First of all, uh, you need to use a material that is, can actually withstand uh, the heat. Yeah. And as I uh, uh, said before, uh, the, the heat coming out there is around 200 degrees yeah. Celsius as a maximum. Yeah. Pretty soon when it's leaving the bullet, it will go down to maybe 100, 120. Yeah. Anyway, so the material uh, we will be using is typically ABS, ABS. or yeah. nylon, yeah. Uh, which uh, can actually withstand uh, those temperatures, yeah. but not that high temperature. And, yeah. and now it gets a little bit complicated. Yeah. And, and the other consideration comes into play. You will need to tell your 3D printing company that you need an infill yeah. of much more than they usually do. And that is, you have a wall thickness, yeah. and in between the outer surface and the inner surface, yeah. you have hard 100% fill. Otherwise, yeah. you would have holes in it. Yeah. But in between, they usually go down to like 20% yeah. infill. Yeah. That would be sufficient for, for normal temperature yeah. and, and stability and everything. Yeah. But you need to go up to like 70, maybe 80% 80, 80 in, in infill yeah. in mm -hmm. order to have it rigid enough, yeah. even with higher temperature. Yeah. Okay. So ABS or nylon yeah. with an infill of at least 70 yeah. as to 80%. High, as high as possible. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but of course, it gets more expensive. Yeah. It takes longer time to print yeah. the more dense you want yeah. it. Okay. Sure. And then you have those parts and then you also need the, the hose or the, the, yes. the tubes. And what, is, what do I have to look for when I buy tubes? Yeah. With our parts, and there might be variations out there, I think with, with some communities, uh, people is actually uh, hacking into those models for, yeah. for good reason to have other diameters. Yeah. Uh, but this is uh, made for 100 millimeter courses, which is pretty pretty normal in, yeah. in Europe. Mm. And uh, then aluminum yeah. hose. This is a flexible one. Yeah. It, you can actually stretch out to, to like three meters at yeah. the most. Mm. Uh, so this would be perfect for passive yeah. vending. Yeah. Then uh, you have to stretch it out in the beginning yeah. uh, where you put in this part. Yeah. Uh, it can be a little bit snug. Uh, yeah. but, but if you massage it a little, yeah. you will actually uh, be able to do it yeah. and then connect it uh, preferably with this kind of, I don't even know what it's called yeah. in English, yeah. uh, where you can uh, uh, fix it together. Yeah. To fix it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the parts, so actually the, the only thing you really have to consider is kind of a find a way to print those 3D parts. There are also some suppliers in the internet where you can find those parts sure. if you Google for ILIO um, 3D parts. And then when you have those, the other parts are really easy to find. So this is just very standard. You yeah. can find it in, in each shop, 100 millimeter diameter aluminum hose, take aluminum in order to be safe temperature sure. wise. Sure. So this you can find anywhere. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, the, and the cost is low actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Perfect. So now we've been talking about the, the, the passive system. Yes. And how would a active setup look? Yes. So if you start out by having the uh, passive system, yeah. you probably al already have those parts. Yeah. Then you can easily switch to active yeah. uh, ventilation. As I said before, when you put this part in, then it actually, the hose in an active situation will pull out the air uh, and taking the smoke, it looks like they are connected, yeah. but they are actually not because this part, the part A, is actually allowing yeah. air to be pulled from the outside also, yeah. making it possible to just to take the smoke yeah. and not empty 
yeah. over there, uh, bullet yeah. roasting chamber. Okay. Yeah, so, so you can actually keep this and having it on. This is what we do in our uh, showroom. Uh, so, sorry, to do it the right way. So when this is put, you can, you can just connect it to the, yeah. to okay. the um, active uh, mm. vent. To the vent, the active yes. vent. Okay. If you know from the beginning yeah. that you would need an active system, yeah. then I would say you can, you can have these parts. Yeah. But if you prefer it like a, a mini range hood, yeah. you can just, just, again, have this, have this tube. Yeah. And then you can have this pretty cheap yeah. small funnel thing. Yeah. I found it, it, it was about something like 10 euros. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, plan for, for uh, yeah. uh, whatever is needed in the active venting system. Yeah. But the important thing is that this one should not go like this. Yeah. Otherwise, you will actually empty it. Yeah. So, so we want to have the same system as we provided with these two parts. Yeah. And you do that by actually having it like in this distance yeah. from okay. the bullet. Perfect. So the smoke will actually, you will see it, which mm -hmm. is also nice. Yeah. So, so you can actually yeah. see it. now it's working. And yes. And, and so having it like this, depending on the suction yeah. speed, uh, is uh, plenty. The beautiful thing about the bullet is that all the air and smoke of the machine is actually coming out in one space. So you can really nicely canalize it. Yeah. And when it comes out of the machine, there is one other um, thing, which is the cooling tray, sure. which is just producing smoke for a really short time. When, when you release the beans, it's much less and much shorter time, but nevertheless, um, optionally, you can also do a venting system for the for sure. the cooling tray. Sure. Yeah. And how would I how would I do this system? Well, so we provide a part C yeah. on our website, which is actually the connection between the the cooling tray yeah. and the hose. Yeah. So so simply, what you do is you remove. Uh, the four screws here on the yeah. cooling tray, put this on yeah. and put back the screws. Yeah, okay. So in a, again, kind of passive system, yeah. you'll just use your, your ventilator in the, in the cooling yeah. tray, which is pretty strong. Yeah. And it's all enough to, to just push the air out like, yeah. like several meters. Yeah. Um, and, and so in, in that case, you just need to connect this. Yeah. And again, uh, the aluminum flexible hose yeah. can be connected to this part yeah. the same way as we did. And it's the same yeah, 100 millimeter aluminum. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have to look for something like, does it have to go up first? I mean, you shouldn't have a very long distance, of yeah. course. Mm. But if it's only a short distance, even up to like a few meters, yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the speed of the air is pretty high. Yeah. So it will be pushed out. It's not like uh, with with a bullet. Yeah, it does re it's really strong. Yeah. So, but but you 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 soon find out if it was too much. Yeah. Because then you you will hear that the the ventilator in the cooling tray will actually stall and and, yeah. and, and stop stop pulling air. Yeah. Okay. But but it's just to say there's a magnitude of difference yeah. between the the cooling yeah. airspeed and the bullet. Yeah. The smoke. Okay. So how long can this system be if it's passive? If it's passive, I would say three, four, five meters. That long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is, I mean, enough for, for most yeah. people. What am I going to do if I don't have a possibility to bring out the smoke? Yeah. Then uh, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need you need to get rid of the smoke somehow. Yeah. There is uh, so-called fume extractors yeah. that you can use. Mm -hmm. I know people, yeah. myself, that yeah. actually made a homemade system yeah. with, with uh, active coal filters and, and whatnot mm -hmm. in a connection with an active uh, ventilation system. Yes. But you can get those uh, fume extractors made for soldering stations. Yes. They are, if they are uh, big enough and, yeah. and have the capacity, good enough for normal use of the bullet. 
Yeah. I would never recommend them for, for more uh, heavy uh, yeah. roasting use. Yeah. And big batches and dark Italian roasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because then you would simply uh, deplete the, the filters yeah. very quickly and mm -hmm. it will be costly. Yeah, okay. But you do have systems that you can actually buy from electronic stores. Yeah. Yeah, so I am, for example, in the situation that I exactly have a room where I don't have a possibility to bring out the smoke. Yeah. And um, that's why I'm working with a system like this, which is yeah. made for soldering. Sure. But as you said, this is not for intense use. This is actually be possible to be used if you use it sometimes. Yeah. Sure. And then um, the system is um, quite easily, you can take, for example, one that you put a bit on, on the bullet mm -hmm. to, to vent it here. And then the other hose you can, you can use yeah. to suck the air out of the cooling tray. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to know more about the Ailio Bullet Roaster, you can go to either the Ailio website, ailio.com or ailio.dk for Ailio Europe, or also on our website, roasttravels.com, where you find instructions, manuals, and uh, roasting profiles for the machine. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have any questions, you can come back anytime to Stefan or me. And uh, until then, I wish you a lot of fun and success roasting on your Ailio Bullet Roaster. Mm -hmm.